It is incredible to be here with you in this space, on this side of creating this incredible telling of Elvis's story. Bruh. <laughs> Have you taken it in yet? Are you still kind of like, I'm still processing. I mean, as we were just talking, like, I gotta pinch myself every day. This yeah, is yeah, yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Are you nervous? about the movie coming out? Are you excited about Like, What are your feelings? I always have nerves, you know, right, because right. you never know how any one person is gonna react. But to be honest, once Priscilla saw it and Lisa Marie saw it, and then hearing you say what you've said about it, like suddenly all the people that are close to me, yeah. I'm like, uh, they're seeing it and they're liking it. And so I just feel such a relief and uh, you know, it was terrifying. <laughs> it was, was it so terrifying? Scary every day. Really? Yeah, you feel so much pressure. Mm, and to and get it right. To get it right. And to find its humanity. Like mm -hmm. and to not fall into the traps of all the caricatures and the misconceptions and also putting his story into context, you feel just such a responsibility. Right. Like the fact that we don't have Elvis without black music and black culture and like all of that, like that's the story that I'm so grateful that people are getting to see that right you know what i mean right and, con and in some ways even maybe confronted with yeah. finally it is yeah. it is um it's not lost on me that some of the greats around you vouched for you in a major way i in fact actually baz told me that denzel washington oh yeah called this man and said now i don't usually do this but uh <laughs> that's a good denzel <laughs> <You know? laughs> right but but he yeah. is he is the guy. If you're looking for at this guy, he is the guy because of your commitment. What was? Did you ask them to do no, that? No, no, I, I, I didn't talk to him before or after. So what did you? How did you respond when you found out he did that? I, I, I gave a call to his agent and I said, Hey, just can you thank D for me? Like I, 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 I really, uh, I, I can't believe. Like I, I, I didn't believe it when I first heard. They said Denzel called. Right. And I guess he'd heard that I was screen testing, and so he, he just gave that call. It was so... And you two had worked together on a play? Yeah, Is that we, right? did a, we did a play called The Iceman Cometh on Broadway. Come on. And that, that's the moment that changed my whole career. Like, I'd, I'd been working in a certain lane for a long time. Okay. And then I took time off, and I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna act if I'm doing... I, I, I want to do stuff that Dig I'm deep. proud of, that I can really... It's gonna challenge me. Yeah. Uh, and I'd really wanted to do a play, and then I got that opportunity, and just getting to work with him every day, like you learn so much. Brother, he's I'm gonna, the greatest. He's the greatest. He's just the best. So there, so then, so then that phone call happens. You yeah. send a video to Baz. Is that, is that yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. in the in like a robe? Yeah, the infamous robe. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I was. I'll try to abridge the story, but basically, I had this. I was trying to figure out what to send to Baz. Right. I sent him, I, no, I, I didn't send, I, I filmed myself singing Love Me Tender. Okay. I watched it back and I couldn't send it. I just saw, like, I no. saw an impersonation. Really? And I saw all the external things and then I, I was like, what, what do I possibly send? And then I had this nightmare a couple nights later that, that woke me up with all this grief. Right. Uh, that that like brought up a lot of things with my mom. And, and mm. so I just took all of that and I sat down at the piano and I, I played and, and I just let that rawness come out. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm in a bathrobe and my hair is a mess and I just, I just woken up and I don't know why I thought like I could even sing Unchained Melody at that point, but I sat down and that's the song that I sang. And it, and it but you did it. And yeah. that's like, it, it very likely, I mean, we've heard like, right, Harry Styles, Miles Teller were all out for the role. What did you actually, what did you think when you heard some of the other guys who were up for it? I, mean, I think they're all so talented, and and, and um, I, to be honest, like I looked at myself and I thought I'm not the guy who's gonna get this at times, you know, because I because I thought, um, you know, I, I I always kind of end up looking and going like, oh, I, I could see that person doing a great job, wow, you know, and okay. and so and there's always imposter syndrome. Yeah, I think I always have that, you know. So then, and yeah. and I wasn't gonna go here, but the fact that you said imposter syndrome, you get Riley. Kia to repost Baz, an early test of yours. Oh yeah, that was a very early test. Like, yeah. it's you singing all of the early Elvis in this movie. I mean, to, but also to know that the family has responded to your performance in yeah. such a way. Is that powerful to you? Is that like an added bonus to you? Or is it everything? It's everything. You? It's beyond words. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, I had no idea how they would feel and I'm just, I cannot tell you how happy I am yeah. 
I really am just so grateful. Brother, you, it is a, there's a lot that has been made about how you have nailed the voice, right? Kelvin told me, Yo, he, you pulled up to the hotel in Australia and you were like, come on, get in the car. He was like, hold on, who's, who is that driving? <laughs> who is that in the car? But there, you, you, you cannot talk about Elvis without talking about the dance moves. Mm. Right? Mm. Catherine told me she had to give you some space. Yeah, yeah. She had to give yeah. you some I space. I ripped some trousers. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> what, is the, what is the key to nailing the Elvis? Because I went Michael Jackson immediately. I tried mm. to do it on the show and I was mm. like, yeah, you know, it's like. And I Let's went. It's Michael. It's Michael yeah, immediately. Yeah, yeah. But what is, the, what is the key to nailing the Elvis hip? Like the I pelvis think, of Elvis? I think it's the fact that, like, Michael had moves. Right. He, he, and a lot of and people. And choreo. Have choreo and moves. Elvis didn't have that. He didn't, he didn't have, he had things I think, like when you watch Hound Dog, I think he had things where he was like in his bedroom going, I might try this. And then he goes out there and he does it and he sees the reaction. Yeah. So there's moments like that, but I don't think that it was ever a move. It was all about the music moving him. Okay. So for me, it was getting in touch with the soul of the music. Okay. And some of those things were literally going in, in, in Nashville. Baz and I were in this small church recording 30 of the most incredible gospel singers I've ever heard in my life. This type of thing where you walk in, they start singing, and you get chills down your spine. Mm -hmm. and I know exactly what you, you mean. Know, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that, and then they sang for eight hours straight, and I stood in the center of them, and everybody's just stomping their feet, and you start feeling what inspired Elvis. Okay. And it's moments like that that made me go, oh, it's about that feeling. So if I ever wasn't feeling that feeling, then I'd go, something's not right, what, what do I need to do? And I'm thinking too externally right now. Okay. And so I, I was incredibly meticulous. Like, you, you have to study like crazy yeah. and watch what his fingers are doing, what his eyes are doing, his head's doing, but that, all of that. I mean, even yeah. the, there's a point in the movie, and I said I was not gonna tell this story, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. That I'm sitting in the movie theater in that first performance in the pink suit, and he does the wiggle. You do the, I'm saying he, you do the wiggle for the first time, and there are people in the crowd going like, oh yeah, yeah. and I found myself in the audience, really? like, in my seat, like, wow. Oh, snap! That's cool. <laughs> He's That's nailing cool. it! It's incredible. Oh, man, thank you. you got to work alongside one of the icons, oh, yeah. the living icons, Tom Hanks. Yeah. And I was saying to Baz, how did you get the nicest guy in Hollywood to play one of the most controversial people in music? But what was the thing for you that you pulled from your experience with him? Like, what's the thing that you'll never forget? So much. The very first time I met him, I was so nervous. You know, it's at the, anytime you meet, you hear, I felt that way with Denzel. Yeah, yeah. And, and he, he did, he's not the same as Tom in the way that he approaches you. So like Tom, I was like, I don't know how it's gonna be. And uh, Tom sees me from far away. It's in Baz's backyard, and he goes, "My boy, give me a hug." And he gives me the biggest bear hug, and he just embraced me. And then he told me about his fears of playing the part. Mm -hmm. He was going. He said, "I'm scared. I cannot imagine how scared you are." And then I could go, I'm terrified. And suddenly then Tom Hanks and I are sitting down right. and feeling like colleagues going, okay, how do we find the relationship of these two men? Yeah. And, uh, and we did so many things. Like he, he, got, he brought me a typewriter from the States and because it's this famous thing that Tom, I'd heard that he did and then he, he gives me this typewriter and with a, with a typewritten letter from Colonel Tom Parker that Come Hanks had written. On. So then I write him back one as Elvis. And that was a way I'd never rehearsed before. We're typing on a typewriter ideas and thoughts of these two men, sending them to each other. And it was really kind of amazing. Wow. I've got room. goosebumps. <laughs> like that's incredible. Yeah. Because it's, it, it lets you into a, a different kind of, a different level of artistry. Mm. And the, the level of seriousness. Everyone I've talked to has talked about you. The word is commitment, right? Mm. An unwavering work ethic. Um, which I think as an actor is the best compliment, right? That's, that's such a um, nice thing to say. That you disappeared in the role. Um, the fashion. Oh, so good. Brother, now you have long been known for the, the do. <laughs> like, right? People have for a long time been talking about your hair. It feels like maybe Elvis rubbed off on you a little bit since. In, in what's uh, in, in like the, in, in the, the shape and like, the, the yeah right like in the in the what yeah. part of it is the slick or is it today the styling for today? I don't know. I, I think I've always liked like James Dean impacted me a lot when I was a kid. Yep. Fifty like Marlon Brando. I was yep. always about the fifties guys. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, I think that that's always sort of impacted my style, the way that I dress, the way that I do my hair or whatever. Um, and that fits into it happens to be. Elvis looked up to James Dean. Right. So a lot of parallels. Like, there's a lot of parallels. A lot of yeah. parallels between yeah. you and Elvis, though, too. I mean, um, 
losing yeah. parents yeah, early yeah, in life, age, you know? At yeah. the same age? Yeah, we were both 23. Wow. When I found that out, that's one of those things. You get chills and you're like, okay, what? Like, this is so... Meant it's to be. so identical. You yeah. Know? It's so meant to be. But yet I never had thought about playing Elvis before. Right. It's not like one of those things where I was like, my whole life, that was something that I've been compared to. So it was really surreal how it just kind of, in about a month, it, everything shifted.